Welcome to a video on learning Twine. In this video, I'm going to cover the story style sheet. Now, the story style sheet is accessed when looking at the story map view of Twine by going to the story menu and selecting edit story style sheet, the second option down. The style sheet or the story style sheet allows you to enter CSS, that is cascading style sheets, which is a way of changing the appearance of elements and other tags within HTML. Twine uses HTML to display the contents of a story. The, C the CSS allows you to change the appearance of those elements and context and contents of items within a story. In these three examples here, I show the different ways to change the passage element within each story. I have Harlow, Sugarcoop, and Snowman. Each, if you can tell, if you understand CSS, each approaches showing a passage in a different way, which is something to note here. Each story format uses different CSS rules to change its layout and the appearance of elements within its own story format. Each one has its own rules, and often those rules contradict or collide with other story formats, because each of them approaches it in its own way. The documentation of each story format can help you understand what these rules are, as well as content within the Twine cookbook, which covers a number of different ways to approach how to do different CSS rules, depending on which story format you might use. But let's start here by looking at Harlow. Harlow, Harlow uses a named element tw-passage for the content of a passage within a story. This is important because if we define our own rules, in this case, background color to be green, those rules will override the default appearance of the story if it uses the Harlow story format. We can see those changes if I close this and play the story. We now see the passage color is green, and only that. In this case, the entire content of the passage, just this link, is green. If we close this, come back to the story menu, come back to the story style sheet, we can then look at the sugar cube example. In this case, instead of a named element, it uses a class. In CSS, a class and an ID are two different ways to approach using styles, rules, within HTML. This first case, sugar cube, uses the dot, which means it's a class. Elements within HTML can have multiple classes, but they usually, and the rule is they should not, have multiple IDs. So in this case, Sugarcube approaches it by having multiple classes, that is multiple sets of rules can be used for any one passage, or any one element, in this case a single passage. So Sugarcube uses passage, dot passage, to change any, any of the default appearance rules within a passage in Twine. So we can show this by closing the story style sheet, coming down to the story menu, going to change story format. In this case, we're jumping directly to Sugarcube, closing this, replaying the story. And we now see the same thing we saw in Harlow. The content area of the passage is now green. Its background color was set to green. And just that. So notice this cell right here is green. Closing this, coming back to the story menu, reopening the story style sheet, we can finally look at how Snowman approaches this. When I mentioned the differences between classes and IDs in CSS and how its language is constructed, I mentioned that IDs should only exist as a single thing within an HTML document. Now, most browsers let you get away with having elements with multiple IDs of the same name, but you shouldn't, as a general rule, have them. Snowman has this by only showing a single passage at a time, which is how the other story formats approach this as well. However, it changes whatever it's showing to passage. So the ID of the element showing the current passage's content will always be passage, similar to how Sugarcube approaches it by using a class. What this means, though, is in general, is to change any of the default appearance rules we can use the ID syntax in CSS and passage. Let's show that right now. Closing this, coming back to the story menu, changing the story format, we're now going to use Snowman. 
closing this, replaying the story. And we see the same thing we saw in Harlow and we saw in Sugar Cube. The content area of the passage is now set to the background color of green. In each case here, across Harlow, Sugar Cube, and Snowman, we were looking at changing the CSS rules. That is, changing the content, or changing the appearance, and that is changing the content, of the story style sheet for that story format. So the story style sheet matches or can match the content of the story format. Again, relating to what I introduced at the beginning of this video, each story format has its own CSS rules. Therefore, to override those CSS rules to change the default appearance of any story using a story format, we have to be aware of any rules those story formats use. In this case, closing this, coming back to the story menu, coming back to story style sheet, we can see the three different ways these built-in story formats approach this. Harlow uses a named HTML element, SugarCube uses a CSS class, and Snowman uses a CSS ID, each of which follow their own rules for changing things in passages and stories and the larger documents. Again, as I noticed, as I noted, Understanding these rules can help you with changing the default appearance of your story when using any of these three built-in story formats. The rules for how to cover this are usually covered in the documentation, especially with SugarCube and with Snowman, or noted in the Twine Cookbook, which covers all three and describes their different elements, the different ways it approaches this, either classes or IDs, and some hints about changing different things. This has been a review of the story style sheet. Noting that the story style sheet and changing any default appearances of elements or content in a story is related back to the story format. Each story format has its own CSS rules. Being aware of these rules can help you with changing the default appearance and changing that story format in a way that might work best for you as an author. Thanks for watching.